we met with the local funeral director and countless morticians who, who hadn't slept since the massacre the day before because they'd been working 24-7 trying to handle so many bodies at once, so many little innocent bodies who had their entire lives still yet to live. And that is there that we met two of the grieving parents, Ryan and Jessica Ramirez. Their 10-year-old daughter, Alethea. She was one of the 19 children that were killed the day before. Now, Alethea, her dream was to go to art school in Paris and one day share her art with the world. Ryan and Jessica were eager to share Alethea's art with us and said if we could share it, that somehow, maybe that would make Aletha smile in heaven. They told us that showing someone else Aletheia's art would in some way keep her alive. Now this particular drawing is a, uh, is a self-portrait right, of, of Aletha drawing with her friend in heaven looking down on her drawing the very same picture. Her mother said uh, of this drawing, she, she said, you know, we never really talked to her about heaven before, but somehow she knew. Letha was 10 years old. Her father, Ryan, this man was steady. He was uncommonly together and calm. When a, a frazzled friend of his came up and said, how are you so calm? I, I'd, be, I'd be going crazy. Ryan told me, he said, no, you wouldn't. No, you wouldn't. You'd be strong for your wife and kids because if they see you go crazy, that will not help them. Just a week prior, Ryan got a full-time line job, stringing power lines from pole to pole. And every day since landing that well-paying full-time job, he reminded his daughter, Alethea, he said, girl, daddy gonna spoil you now. Told her every single night, he said, Daddy's going to take you to SeaWorld one day. But he didn't get to, see, he didn't get to spoil his daughter. Lydia, she did not get to go to SeaWorld. We also met Anna and Danilo, Danilo, Danilo the mom and the stepdad of nine-year-old Maite Rodriguez. And my Maite wanted to be a marine biologist. She was already in contact with Corpus Christi University of A&M for her future college enrollment. Nine years old. Maite cared for the environment so strongly that when the city asked her mother if they could release some balloons into the sky in her memory, her mom said, oh, no. Maite wouldn't want to litter. Maite wore green high-top converse with a heart she had hand-drawn on the right toe because they represented her love of nature. Camilla's got these shoes. Can you show these shoes, please? Wore these every day. Green Converse with a heart on the right toe. These are the same green Converse on her feet that turned out to be the only clear evidence that could identify her after the shooting. How about that? <clears> hmm. <throat> Maite wrote a letter. Her mom said if Maite's letter could help someone accomplish her dream, that then her death would have an impact. And it would mean her dying had a point and was it pointless. That it would make the loss of her life matter. The letter reads, Marine biologist, I want to pass school to get to my dream college. My dream college is in Corpus Christi by the ocean. I need to live next to the ocean because I want to be a marine biologist. Marine biologists study animals and the water. Most of the time I will be in a lab. Sometimes I will be on TV. Then there was Ellie Garcia a 10-year-old, and her parents, Stephen and Jennifer. Ellie loved to dance and she loved church. She even knew how to drive tractors and was already working with her dad and her uncle mowing yards. 
Ellie was always giving of her gifts, her time, even half-eaten food on her plate, they said. So around the house, we called her the great re-gifter. Smiling through tears, her family told us how Ellie loved to embrace, said she was the biggest hugger in the family. Now, Ellie was born Catholic, but had been going to Baptist church with her uncle for the last couple of years. Her mom and dad were proud of her because they said she was learning to love God no matter where. The week prior to her passing, she'd been preparing to read a verse from the Bible for the next Wednesday night's church service. The verse was from Deuteronomy 6.5. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy might. That's who Ellie was becoming. But she never got to read it. Service on that Wednesday night. Then there was a fairy tale love story of a teacher named Irma and her husband Joe. What a great family this was. This was an amazing family. Camille and I, we, 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 we sat with about 20 of their family members in their living room, along with their four kids. Uh, they were kids were 23, 19, 15, and 13. They, they, they shared all these stories about how Irma and Joe served the community and would host all these parties and how Irma and Joe were planning on getting a food truck together when they soon retired. They were humble, hard working people. Irma was a teacher who her family said went above and beyond and just couldn't say no to any kind of teaching. Joe had been commuting to and from work 70 miles away in Del Rio for years. Together they were the glue of the family. Both worked overtime to support their four kids. Irma even worked every summer when school was out. The money she had made two summers ago paid to, paid to paint the front of the house. The money she made last summer paid to paint the sides of the house. This summer's work was going to pay to paint the back of the house. Because Irma was one of the teachers who was gunned down in the classroom. And Joe, her husband, literally died of heartache the very next day when he had a heart attack. They never got to paint the back of their house. They never got to retire. And they never got to get that food truck together.